Welcome to the special meeting of the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission, October 31st, 2023. The meeting notice was posted according to the requirements of the Open Meetings Act. The meeting will come to order. Call the roll, please. Oh, good. <laughs> Call the roll, please. First, Congressional District Commissioner Seth Phillips. Here. Second, Congressional District Commissioner Kevin Potter. Here. Third, Congressional District Commissioner Charles Ortega. Here. Fourth, Congressional District Commissioner Lindy Ritz. Here. Fifth, Congressional District Commissioner Blake Rainey. Here. At-Large Commissioner Jim Putnam. Here. At-Large Commissioner Jerry Hunter. Present. We have a quorum. Our first order of business is approval of the minutes. Draft of the minutes, August 9th, has been sent to you. Do I hear a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Potter? Aye. Commissioner Ortega? Aye. Commissioner Rainey? Aye. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz? Aye. Commissioner Putnam? Abstain. Commissioner Hunter? Aye. Item four? Agency Operational Assessment. Director Artis. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Had to uh, correct that on all the things that I'm saying for this uh, afternoon meeting. Good afternoon, <clears throat> Madam Chair, Commissioners. Hope everybody is doing uh, fine on this uh, wonderful fall Halloween day here in the great state of Oklahoma. Um, item number four before you is <clears throat> an agency operational assessment. We have visited about this briefly at uh, various junctures. So um, if we go back to pre-COVID uh, and even pre-me, there was this transportation cabinet modernization effort uh, that was uh, about an 18 to 24 month effort to go about the three agencies in the transportation cabinet and figure out ways we can be efficient, share resources, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Obviously, a testament to, to sharing of resources is what we're doing today. Uh, we would not be having this commission meeting without the uh, partnership between us and ODOT and the staff of ODOT to be able to help us put on uh, said commission meeting. Um, but following on the, the transportation cabinet uh, modernization effort, we had a, uh, an opportunity to do a little bit of a deeper dive into the organization. Um, OMES's Business Process Operations Center of Excellence uh, had been stood up, and uh, we started having conversations with them probably in the spring of 22, and then uh, May of 22, they started doing some initial assessments and review of, of the agency. Um, <clears throat> follow that on uh, through the summer and, and into the fall, we completed the uh, recommendations, um, and of course, uh, after that, uh, they did a little bit of a deeper dive into the organization starting in December. Um, they interviewed staff. Uh, they visited with myself and Chris Wadsworth about agency responsibilities, individual employee responsibilities, job tasks, uh, hours worked, uh, those sorts of things. <clears throat> and then earlier this spring, came to the final uh, conclusion and operational assessment that uh, I think we all know um, and, and have lauded for, for many years and that we have a, a really great uh, operating machine here at the agency. Uh, we have a great staff. We wear many hats. Uh, a lot of the, the folks behind me put in extra hours uh, to get the mission done. Um, I don't really consider us like your traditional governmental organization, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, 40 hours a week, call it good. Um, we, we do what we need to do to get the job done, and that usually requires 50, 60, sometimes even more, requires Sundays and Saturdays, <clears throat> requires evenings, uh, to do what we have to do to make sure that aviation aerospace is known throughout the state of Oklahoma. Um, not to be uh, too surprised, but uh, part of the uh, final operational assessment and recommendation was that we were significantly uh, underpowered um, as an agency for the area of responsibility that we have. And we know that has grown uh, in, in recent years, whether it's with our aerospace industry activities, whether it's with our aerospace education and STEM activities, 
whether it's with the additional funds that the legislature has blessed us with to put in investments across the state of Oklahoma. Um, but they, they have indicated to us that, you know, here are some areas that you all could, could have some support. And I think uh, just looking at it, to be honest with you, the, the team has been able to keep the, uh, the boat afloat's the wrong analogy. I got to find one similar to aviation, keep the airplane flying, keep the engines on the wings. Uh, the team's been able to do a pretty good job of that. But I can tell you that we are coming to a point in time that if we are going to continue all the great things that you see on our social media, in our PR world, uh, we're going to need some additional help. And so that was one of the things they came to. Of course, we are not in the business of trying to be this big government behemoth organization. Uh, we want to do this um, strictly by the book and make sure that we do it where it's uh, cutting maybe measuring twice, maybe three times, and only having to cut once. Um, because of that, uh, although they concluded that we were between five and six people short, uh, you'll see in this next agenda item, we're only going to be seeking two positions to fill. Uh, one to help uh, Sandra Shelton and all of our governmental affairs activities, uh, but also a position to help Paula Keedy uh, and Michelle Bozaiden with our aerospace education activities. Other things uh, that they are requesting or suggesting, including uh, staff support to help us uh, ensure that our funds are expended uh, wisely and appropriately, so whether that's some staff engineers or some project managers. Um, but my, my goal here, and having had conversations over the summer, is to check out what contracting routes we have available to us. And, and you'll probably see that at our December commission meeting some requests to issue some RFQs and RFPs for on-call services from our consultant community and from our, <coughs> our contracting community to help us do some of the things that we need to do. Because obviously we know uh, it's very important that if we are going to uh, bring on more people, we got to do it judiciously and we got to do it correctly and not just do it for the sake of doing it to grow government. So with that being said, it, it really was a uh, pretty interesting look um, into the organization. Uh, especially from a, from a new set of eyes. Uh, I, I can see it on a daily basis, but it's one of those things you, uh, you can't see the forest through the trees when you're working in it every single day. And so having that independent review uh, from OMES, who does this on a regular basis for different organizations, um, and seeing them do that uh, is, is truly, truly helpful. Um, and so I, uh, <clears throat> I stand before you for any questions. I'd be happy to provide the overall operational assessment to you via email if you'd be interested in that. Um, it is a, not, a, not a long read, but uh, definitely a, a read nonetheless. Um, and, and I would expect for us to only grow as fast or as successful as aerospace and aviation is growing. And we, know one, we want this to be our number one industry in the state. We know workforce is a big challenge for us and we know uh, getting out and getting people more aware of aviation aerospace and the things that Sandra and all of the team do to, to bring awareness through the events that the agency hosts um, is, is truly transformational. So um, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions about our operational assessment. Um, it, it really was a, an interesting process. Uh, not, not only are we going to take some of the uh, personnel recommendations potentially, but some of the other recommendations on how we can keep track of hours um, and, and comp time and, and other things to help us with our next operational assessment, maybe two, three, four years on down the flight path. Um, because we are the, the little airplane that could. We, we definitely, in, in fighting terms, punch above our weight. Um, and, and I think we are probably the leanest and meanest and probably one of the best run state organizations in Oklahoma's state government circle. And, and I'll be proud to put this team up against just about anybody. So. Uh, with that being said, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, I'll, I'll stand for any questions before we uh, look to move on to item number five. I'm confused. You mentioned that the assessment said you're five to seven people short? Five to six. Five to six. Okay. You're only <clears throat> going for two? At this juncture in time. Is this a budget issue? It is not a budget issue. It's a uh, judiciously cautious issue. Um, and to see how we can uh, move forward without uh, growing too fast. And, and to be candid with you, it's also a training issue. I mean, if we brought on five people all at once, we're only a team of 12, uh, there's a lot of training going on. And so if we're going to bring on it, and I will probably in, in future meetings, maybe one or two more, uh, depending on what our on-call uh, RFQs and RFPs result in, 
in terms of contracting capabilities. Um, there may be one or two others that, that come to us in Q1 or Q2, um, but right now it's going to be a, uh, we'll call it a crawl, walk, run assessment at this point in time. Um, I, for, for a multitude of, multitude of reasons. Budget is, is not one of those factors. One of those factors is just being a, a judicious use of the resources that we have, um, the training issues, and then also maybe there's a, a better, more efficient way to look at the, uh, the consulting or the private community to help us with some of our efforts with on-call contracts and, and other resources. So that was my next question then. These <clears throat> ROPs and Qs would be for a short-term assistance for your functions? So on-call on would typically be an annual basis. So for example, uh, we'll use ODOT as a, as a good analogy. O, ODOT has on-call bridge inspection. And so they have five or six different consulting firms that will do bridge inspections as ODOT needs, it's a contract not to exceed X dollar value. Um, and so if ODOT needs some assistance that year in the bridge inspection world, they're gonna call upon uh, a consultant to go do it. It's not a guaranteed contract, it's a, it's a not to exceed contract. And so if we enter into an on-call arrangement, <clears throat> it will be for kind of an hourly not to exceed uh, activity. And if we need the help, we'll call upon the help. If we don't need the help, then, then we don't call upon the help. Kind of an IDIQ contract? Kind, yeah, so IDIQ from the federal government, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Although it's, there is a, def, there, it's not, the I in IDIQ is, is not the, the indefinite is not the, uh, not the well, activity a term in the normally state. with it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, just pull out your restraint on that. As a diehard conservative, you're probably aware that I am always opposed to government bloat. But in this case, the two that you've selected, I think, are very, very much overdue. And thank you for not jumping on everything they give you. I, I am uh, maybe not as, as far as you are, sir, but I understand the, uh, the premises and have that same uh, similar uh, concern, uh, both from a, uh, a taxpayer perspective as well as a, as a PR perspective, given the, the governmental climate that we are in in the state. And so uh, it, it will be a uh, crawl, walk, run assessment, and only as we feel the, uh, the, the significant dire need to have some assistance will we call upon your all's uh, request to, to make that happen. So um, yeah, no, no need to go jumping into the pool all at once. We'll, uh, we'll walk in to said pool. Thank you. All right, item five. So item five is the uh, we call it meat and potatoes of that discussion. Uh, we are seeking uh, approval to fill a new aerospace education and curriculum specialist position, as well as a new marketing and outreach coordinator position. Um, those are just the, the generic titles. Uh, their finished working titles may be a little different depending on uh, who is hired in that position, but uh, those are the two uh, positions we're seeking approval for today, and uh, I do recommend approval for that. I'll stand for any questions. No questions? Call the roll, please. Oh, need a first motion. and a second. Motion, <laughs> motion and a second. See? Jumping right to. Second. Now you can call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Item six, Chris Wadsworth, financial report. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Afternoon, clarify. <laughs> Starting out with the financial summary document, as of September 30th, the Commission had an ending cash balance of about 18.3 million, encumbrances totaling just over 5.6 million. Estimated statutory revenue for the remainder of the fiscal year is 13.4 million. And outstanding reimbursements owed to the agency total about $763,000. Total amount of remaining expenditures that could be incurred this fiscal year total $17.2 million, with the bulk of that, about $14.2 million, being the airport construction program, provided that those grants are approved. Leaves us with an expected available cash balance after encumbrances and expected income of about $9.5 million for this fiscal year. And total fiscal year to date expenditures are 1.5 million as of the end of September. On the revenue document, 
total statutory revenue collected for July was about 260,000, August was 818,000, and September was 949,000. So we saw a nice increase each of those months. Total statutory revenue collected through September of this fiscal year is just over 2 million, compares to about 1.3 million for last year. So revenue for that time frame is up about 56% compared to last year. And then three year average um, registration fees, excise tax, fuel tax, and license plates is up about 990,000 compared to what our three year average is. Now you may be thinking last year was revenue, um, record revenue. We're above that this year. Last year, the revenue really took off October through about December and January. So I think those annual comparisons the next month or two will probably get quite a bit closer. Um, hopefully not. Maybe we'll have a couple good months, but I'd expect those gaps to close quite a bit over the next month or two. So um, finally, one additional item I do want to mention. Um, the agency, as we've mentioned in the past, did receive ARPA grants for the two air and space museums in the state. We were able to close out the Tulsa Air and Space Museum grant and award them their $300,000 in late August. So that ARPA grant is completed and closed. And the Weatherford project is slated to begin late December, early January. And we'll be looking forward to working with them first half of next year to hopefully get our portion of that project uh, in the ground and get going. Happy to answer any questions. Questions? That's the most I've ever seen. I know. It's amazing. It's nice. Thanks, Chris. Five-year airport construction program. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item number seven, and uh, yes, we do have Nick Young here, but uh, we were uh, didn't want to belabor him on one of his first days back from the uh, the birth of his new uh, new kid. So let's give him a crack. congratulations on that success. So we're. <laughs> what? He was involved somehow? He, he, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, moral Somebody support. else did all the work. Moral, moral support, yes. Yeah. Um, as, a, as a new dad myself, I, uh, I'm, I'm supportive of the lack of sleep or try to be there thereof. But um, no, uh, airport construction program, I'm going to take these items today. Um, got five, five projects to add into the airport construction program. Uh, one for our hangar program, um, that's a 100 by 120 hangar. Uh, these ACP pages are uh, back there behind your tab if you want to take a look at them. Uh, the Lawton project is a $1.6 million project, uh, split obviously 40-60 going the grant route. Commission share 640,000, sponsor share 960,000. Uh, the next four projects are crack seal and seal coats. Uh, that are going to be considered uh, in-house designs by uh, yours truly, your engineering staff uh, behind me here, um, working uh, obviously on some of these uh, smaller projects to ensure they keep their uh, engineering uh, instruments sharp, uh, as well as making sure that uh, our airports can get a, a great deal uh, being able to have this designed in-house. The first one is, is Salisaw. Um, and so Salisaw's total estimated cost is about $330,000. That's at the 95-5 ratio, so $313,500 for commission and sponsor $16,500. Uh, Seminole is uh, $309,000 uh, at the 95-5 ratio, and that's $293,550 for the commission share and $15,450 for the local share. Then we have Stan Stamper, uh, which is down in southeast Oklahoma, Hugo, uh, runway crack seal seal coat. Uh, that project is $351,000 at the 95-5 ratio, commission share $333,450, and sponsor share $17,550. Uh, that one's a little more expensive just because it's got a few more cracks to repair down there than some of the others. And then last but not least is uh, Hefner Easley in Wagner, Oklahoma, northeast Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa. Uh, total project cost there is $236,000 at the 95-5 ratio, commission share $224,200, and sponsor share $11,800. Staff recommends approval for including these five projects in the ACP, but I'll stand for any questions. Questions, comments? So no FAA funds are available at all? Uh, no, sir. No FAA funds for these all projects. Us. Okay. I move for approval. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. 
Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Up next, Aeronautics Commission Act as agent consent docket. Yes, uh, item number eight, uh, acting as agent in our consent docket. Uh, any commissioner may request that any or all of these items be considered individually and voted on individually. Uh, as you all will remember from time to time, we act as agent for our communities in the contracting of particular projects. Um, so before you, you have uh, four different projects that we'll be considering uh, for contracting. The first is at the Broken Bow Municipal Airport. Uh, this is a project that is in the approved ACP for the rehabilitation of their runway, uh, the hangar taxi lane, and then some potentially some obstruction removal. Uh, this is for us to enter into a design contract. Uh, as you can see there, uh, total cost is uh, 138,500, 95,5 split. Uh, it will be designed in calendar year 24, and uh, once designed and we have bids, we'll come back to you for approval on the construction side of the house. Item B is at Chattanooga. Uh, Chattanooga is looking to do an apron reconstruction project, which is in the approved ACP. Uh, again, this is for design services, us to contract for that for just shy of $94,000 at the 95-5 ratio, as you see there on the screen. Uh, this will be designed in calendar year 24 and hopefully be bringing bids back to you sometime in the springtime for this particular project for approval on the construction side of the house. Item C. Um, so if you'll remember, uh, we are helping our partner agency at the OSIDA, the Oklahoma Space Industry Development Authority, uh, helping them with their uh, master services agreement and doing design uh, out there um, at their request. While well, we had entered into a five-year on-call agreement with a consultant for engineering services, uh, they would prefer us to go the route of doing individual task orders with individual consultants. And so the first project that is up on the list uh, would be the cancellation of the five-year on-call agreement and instead entering into that single task order agreement for design services for runway, pavement, taxiway pavement, apron pavement, rehabilitation, which is a project they would like to do with their prep funds that the legislature dedicated directly to them. Uh, design cost is $386,000. Uh, this will be paid for 100% by the commission. Of course, we will be reimbursed from OSIDA using their prep funds, so we are merely being the instrument vehicle uh, here by which they are uh, going through this process and uh, you will see us after we advertise again for other for some of the other projects that they have to do uh, some other single task order items this is uh, just just for reference this is something that our commercial airports do on a regular basis usually your GA airports they'll have a five-year on call that's what they do that 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 consultant covers all the <clears throat> services needed over that five-year time period but as you get into the Will Rogers and the Tulsa Internationals of the world uh, they really just have different consultants that they pick for each single individual project and that's kind of the route that this particular airport wanted to go and so this uh, first project for pavement rehabilitation even though design seems high at $386,000 this is for a project that's estimated to cost between eight and ten million dollars in in totality so um, this project, if uh, we go down this path, will be bid through the ODOT system, and of course we'll come back to you for the, the contracting vehicle for that once we have bids in hand. Item D, uh, last of our uh, acting as agent projects is at the Tahlequah Municipal Airport. This is uh, phase one of a uh, planning effort for the West Hangar and Terminal Area. Uh, this is uh, $28,000, 95-5 split. Uh, to be done in calendar year 2024 and hopefully once this is done it should only take a handful of months we'll be back to you with phase two of the planning effort but uh, staff recommends approval for a through d of item eight i will stand for any questions questions or comments do i hear a motion for approval and this would be all of them or if you want to pull one out Move to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next item is airport construction grant program. 
Kelly Finn Cannon. Good afternoon. Um, afternoon. Airport construction grant program. Uh, there's an amendment to grant uh, to reconstruct the terminal apron and install a perimeter fence and gate at David J. Perry Airport in Goldsby. The amendment will allow for a line item adjustment due to liquidated damages. Funding will be moved from, from construction to inspection to offset costs due to the increase in time on the project. The in amendment will not increase the Commission's previously approved share. And uh, with that, I'll stand for any questions. This is the uh, tornado damage. I'm sorry? Tornado. Is this due to the no, tornado damage? No, it's uh, due to uh, the contractor ran over their construction duration, and uh, those ex that extra time caused uh, extra cost for the engineer to be there, mm -hmm. and so it offset the, the cost there. All right. Any other questions, comments? Do I hear a motion? I move for approval. Information only? Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry. I'm jumping the gun. That doesn't seem to be any change then. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. Construction grant program. Okay, the construction grant program and uh, any commissioner may request that any or all of these items be considered individually and, and we'll go through those. Item A, <clears throat> the commission will consider approving a state grant for a project that is currently identified in the Commissioner's Approved Airport Construction Grant Program at Ardmore Municipal Airport. The project consists of Phase 1 of the parallel taxiway construction. Based on bids, the total project cost is $5,579,249.06 and will be funded uh, $5,021,324 of AIP federal grant funds. $278,962 of state grant funds and $278,963.06 of sponsor matching funds and, approve, and approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item B, uh, commission will consider approving state grants for a project that is currently identified in the commissioner's approved airport construction program at Ardmore Municipal Airport the project consists of phase one of the parallel taxiway construction. Based on bids, the total project cost is $652,218.38 and will be funded with $586,996 of BIL federal grant funds, $32,611 of state grant funds, and $32,611.38 of sponsor matching funds and approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant, grant application. Item C. Oh, Kelly, we yes. have, I think we have art, some Ardmore reps in here if you guys want to say a few things. Uh, just, just for reference on this Ardmore project, you've seen it twice here. You'll see it again in a uh, future item. This is part of a large effort for the air cargo development, which you've talked about with PREP. Um, and so while you hear the reference total project cost, that's total cost for that segment of the project. I think total project was over $17 million in total and it's being funded in multiple different sources. So Bill, you take it away. Bill Murphy, president of the Ardmore Development Authority. I uh, just want to say thank you to the OAC. You've all been great partners for Ardmore. Um, this uh, project, actually the three that you'll hear today are part of, as uh, Grayson mentioned, a larger taxiway echo. Uh, that will help facilitate our air cargo development at the air park. Um, this is part of our long-term strategy to help diversify our economy. Um, that is no more important than after Thursday's announcement with Michelin's uh, departure from, uh, from Ardmore. So we appreciate uh, your uh, ongoing support of projects at the Ardmore Municipal Air Park. Thank you. Thank you. I, I should have mentioned that uh, Ben Nagavi's not here. He's uh, at a conference with his professor, Dr. Nagavi wife uh, in Canada at a, some kind of a professor teaching conference. That's why I'm standing up here doing this instead of Ben, but um, I'm sure he is glad to be there instead of here today. <laughs> uh, uh, item C. The Commission will consider approving design costs for a project that is currently identified in the Commissioner's approved airport construction program at Bartlesville Municipal Airport. 
The project consists of constructing taxi lanes for the city's new hangar development. The estimated design cost of the project is $178,500 with and will be funded with $169,575 of state grant funds and $8,925 of sponsor mat matching funds. Item D, uh, commission will consider approving a state grant for a project that is currently identified in the commission's approved airport construction program at Blackwell Tonkwa Municipal Airport. The project consists of widening and overlay of runway 1735. Based on bids, the total project cost is $1,341,998 and will be funded with $1,207,798 of federal grant funds, $67,100 of state grant funds, and $67,100 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item E, the Commission will consider approving a state grant for a project that is currently identified in the Commissioner's Approved Airport Construction Program at Clarence E. Page Municipal Airport. The project consists of rehabilitating the PAPIs for both runway 17 right, 35 left, uh, installing a wind cone and a, flight, and a flight inspection. Based on bids, the total project cost is $600,387 and will be funded with $400,000 of state grant funds and $200,387 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item F, the commission will consider approving a state grant for the project that is currently identified in the commission's approved airport construction program at Claremore Regional Airport. The project consists of constructing a 100 by 75 foot hangar. Based on bids, the total project cost is $1,120,150 and will be funded with $524,000 of federal funds, $448,060 of state grant funds, and $148,090 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Uh, item G and H are uh, projects at El Reno, and uh, Katie Gore is here from El Reno, representing El Reno. Um, if you'd like to come forward and... Good afternoon, my name is Katie Gore and I'm here with the City of El Reno. Uh, we just want to thank you for your continued support of our airport and the projects that we continue, look forward to continuing to do in the future. The Commission will consider approving a state grant for the project that is currently identified in the Commission's approved airport construction program at El Reno Regional Airport. The project consists of rehabilitating runway 1735 pavement. Based on bids, the total project cost is $555,556 and will be funded with $500,000 of federal grant funds, $27,778 of state grant funds, and $27,778 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item H. Uh, the Commission will consider approving a state grant for the project that is currently identified in the Commission's approved airport construction program at El Reno Regional Airport. The project consists of rehabilitating the runway lights, pappies, and a flight inspection. Based on bids, the total project cost is $548,813 and will be funded with $521,372 of state grant funds and $27,441 of sponsor matching funds and approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item I, the commission will consider approving state grant for a project that is currently identified in the commission's approved airport construction program at Halliburton Field in Duncan. The project consists of constructing a taxi lane. Based on bids, the total project cost is $1,452,540 and will be funded with $400,000 of federal grant funds, $979,913 of state grant funds, and $72,627 of sponsor matching funds. 
and approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Apron. Apron around other hangers. Commissioner, if you'll look at the next agenda, this is the totality of that project. This is one of those that was split into two separate okay. grants I'm for sorry. the ease of Michelle's life and grant administration. As she'll <laughs> tell you these days, it's becoming quite tricky. Um, okay. But uh, if you Press go on. back to that diagram, uh, this next project will be for the apron and the T-hanger taxi lane. This, so that cost right there, the previous cost was for the the new taxi lane going east and west. Down Thank at you. the bottom of the drawing there, yes. Okay. Item J, the commission will consider approving a state grant for the project that is currently identified in the commission's approved airport construction program at Duncan. The project consists of re rehabilitating the apron based on bids. The total project cost is $513,420 and will be funded with $462,078 of federal grant funds, $25,671 of state grant funds, and $25,671 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is continued upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item K, the commission will consider approving change order to state grant 404 23-FS for the rehabilitating runway 220, installing medium intensity runway lights, and installing runway end identifier lights at McCurtain County Regional Airport in Idabel. The change order will allow for additional paving, under drain, and lighting. The estimated cost will be $912,439.50 and will be funded with $821,195.56 of federal grant funds, $45,621.97 of state grant funds, and $45,621.97 of sponsor matching funds. Item L, the commission will consider approving state grant for the project that is currently identified in the commission's approved airport construction program at Okima Municipal Airport. The project consists of constructing new taxi lanes based on bids. The total project cost is $867,390 and will be funded with $824,021 of state grant funds and $43,370 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item M. The commission will consider approving state grant for a project that is currently identified in the commissioner's approved airport construction program at Mulgee Regional Airport. The project is to conduct term, a terminal area plan. The estimated cost of the study is $101,100 and will be funded with $96,045 of state grant funds and $5,055 of sponsor matching funds and approved uh, approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item N, the commission will consider approving a state grant for the project that is currently identified in the commissioner's approved airport grant program at Pahuska Municipal Airport. The project is to con conduct a terminal area plan. The estimated cost for the study is $155,300 and will be funded with $147,535 of state grant funds and $7,765 of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Item O, the commission will consider approving a change order to the state grant constructing a hangar and adjacent apron at Thomas Municipal Airport. The change order will allow for additional materials testing, upgrade, upgraded roof insulation and paint, electric and plumbing of the building and drainage. The estimated additional cost will be $19,282.42 and will be funded with $11,569.45 of state grant funds through the hangar loan program and seven million, I'm sorry, $7,000 $712.97 of sponsor matching funds. Item P, the commission will consider approving a state grant 
for a project that is currently identified in the Commission's approved airport construction program at Tulsa Riverside. The project consists of phase two to reconstruct the connector taxiways for the primary runway, one left, 19 right. Based on bids, the total project cost is $4,332,456 and will be funded with $3,860,000 of federal grant funds, $214,478 of state grant funds, and $257,378 of sponsor matching funds, and approve, an approval is contingent upon the Commission's receiving an acceptable grant application. And finally, Q, item Q, the Commission will consider approving a state grant for a project that is currently identified in the Commission's approved airport construction program at the University of Oklahoma Max Westheimer Airport in Norman. The project consists of design and siting for a new air traffic control tower. The total project cost is $1 million and will be funded with $900,000 of federal grant funds, $50,000 of state grant funds, and 50,000s of sponsor matching funds. And approval is contingent upon the commission receiving an acceptable grant application. Um, I'll stand for any questions and action is required. Questions? That's quite a list. Yes. I'm appalled at how much Pappy lights cost. 600,000. They're going up. Let's try not to hit them with a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Motion for approval on the consent docket. I so move. Do I hear a second? Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 11, prep fund project consent docket. The prep fund continues. Um, item 11, item A, uh, again, this is a consent docket. Commission, commissioners can consider approving any of these grants separately if they so desire. Um, Ardmore Municipal Airport, uh, phase one of the parallel taxiway construction uh, based on bids. This segment of the project's gonna cost just a shade over $8.5 million. Again, this is 100% money, as you can see. The totality of the project was about $17 million uh, based on the FAA money, the local money, and the prep money, and the regular state money that we are putting into the overall taxiway project as a part of the, the grander cargo development effort down at Arbor Municipal. Item B is a hangar project at the uh, Chickasha Municipal Airport, two 75 by 75 box hangars. Uh, based on bids, we're looking at $1,075,850 total project cost to be funded with. 430, 340 of state grant funds, and then 645, 510 of sponsor matching funds. This is the traditional 4060 uh, grant hangar project. And I believe we have Keith Johnson with the city of Chickasha here if he wants to come make some remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. I appreciate uh, the time to, to be in front of you and appreciate your time today. The city of Chickasha is. Uh, Small town of about 18,000 people for those that uh, haven't been through there recently, but we are growing and uh, we are making some pretty significant efforts to upgrade the quality of our airport and uh, this project of adding hangar space will go uh, a long way to, to help us accomplish that goal. So we uh, invite your support of this and uh, appreciate the support we've had from, from you in the past. Uh, it's been uh, extremely needed and beneficial to the citizens of uh, Central and South Oklahoma. We uh, are seeing a pretty significant increase in demand for services that our airport can provide, and uh, this is, goes a long way to, to help us uh, meet the needs and demands of uh, the aviation community and uh, the citizens of Gr Grady County and the, the regional uh, partners that we have in that area. So thank you for your, again for your time and consideration. Thank you. Question, uh, yes, what's sir. gonna happen to the 80 year old Navy hangar? That's a great question. Uh, we're looking at uh, a couple of different options. Most likely they will come down. Those are not original to that airport uh, and have outlived their, their expected use of life and they're, they're pretty beat up if you've been there recently. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of weather damage and uh, we'd like to keep some semblance of those for 
uh, historical purposes for uh, those that have fond memories of, the, of that airport, but uh, not likely to be useful for hangar space going forward. So that uh, strategic planning of the airport is taking place, and that question is being considered. But I don't have a, a final answer for okay. what, what we're doing there. Thank you. I'm going to defer to my uh, consultant. So would you know exactly? Or? We're at pretty full capacity now. So we've had demand for more more space, but I, I don't know the. I know you have a flight school and perhaps a modest charter operation too, right? We do have a flight school there now. Yeah. Show 28 with one jet yeah. currently. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's a large driver for these hangars right now. The majority of our hangar space is in two full hangars, and as you know, turbines don't want to share space with anybody else. Right. So that's one of the biggest reasons we're seeing demand. Thank you. Thank you. I'll also mention that, oh, I broke it. Uh, I'll also mention Chickasha is, is benefiting from the, uh, the metro area growth. So as we've seen, you know, the CE pages, the Guthrie Edmonds of the world starting to, to fill up. It's, it's in the Sundances, and we will see the El Reno's, the Chickasha's, the Paul's Valley's, uh, the Shawnee's, the Seminoles of the world start to fill up too from greater Oklahoma City uh, metro folks. I know there's a, several people in the Newcastle Tunnel area that would love to have an airplane based at, you know, somewhere local in Chickasha might be their simplest route just to go down the turnpike and get there. So good things happening in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Item C, uh, last item of this uh, prep consent docket is uh, two executive style hangars at the Okmulgee Regional Airport, 68 by 56s. Uh, total project cost is uh, 1162540 uh, will be funded with 639397 of federal grant funds, 465016 of state grant funds, and 58127 of sponsor matching funds. Uh, staff recommends approval for these three items, but I'll stand for any questions. Questions or comments? Do I hear a motion? Move approval. I hear a second. Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Uh, item number 12, uh, other than the uh, projects that were just approved or previously discussed, uh, other prep fund activities are, are ongoing. Um, the MRO uh, facility at Will Rogers is about 60 to 70 percent complete on design. They are going to be breaking ground on the uh, fuel line pipeline relocation anytime, uh, and hopefully we'll have a uh, contractor for the hangar in place by Q1 of next year. Uh, I know Woodward is currently in several stages of design from the hangar to the terminal uh, to other activities like utilities at their airport to, to fund some of the prep things that are going to think we'll see some potential grant approval uh, activities either at the December meeting or early next year. Uh, and then of course Tulsa Aircraft, Air Traffic Control Tower, uh, their design is moving forward and I think they are trying to bid out by Q1 of next year as well. So, so prep is, is doing great things. Uh, we are obviously in, in constant communication with our state legislature on how we're using those monies, um, and I know there's been discussions of how can we further support aviation aerospace using PrEP or some other mean or method that the state legislature is interested in. So uh, continuing to look forward to that conversation and, and of course, are ever, ever mindful of how we can better improve our aviation aerospace system with all the the state funding that is out there and available. So uh, great things are coming and look forward for more prep approval projects in our December, January, and the rest of the 2024 calendar slate of meetings. But I'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, item 13, Aerospace and Aeronautics Economic Impact Study. So there's not many times that you get to say that some of the best money spent uh, at the agency is, is this. Uh, but the economic impact study that we did in 2017 
was probably dollar for dollar the best value thing that we ever spent money on. Um, and I think you all know that from how it's been utilized uh, every time the governor, lieutenant governor, Senate pro tem, House speaker, uh, federal delegation member speaks and says aviation and aerospace is our state's second largest industry. Even though we may not get the credit, it warms my heart because that was done by us. Um, and so uh, that was some of the best money we've ever spent. Of course, no good deed goes unpunished. And of course, everybody wants to know well, how we've done since 2017. And so uh, now is the time to move forward with an update to that uh, economic impact study, see how we weathered COVID, see how the Commerce Department is uh, doing with recruiting new business to the state. I think we will see an increase and in uptick in the $44 billion a year of annual economic impact number. Uh, how big? I don't know. Are we going to overtake oil and gas? I doubt it. Um, I think once we do this one and then we'll do another one maybe five, six years from now, at that point in time we may have overtaken oil and gas, but this will be a good ben benchmark to see where we're at in the state of Oklahoma. So in order to do that, we need your all's permission to move forward with the request for qualifications process to select a consultant to help us with that statewide economic impact study, which is what staff is recommending for approval before you today. Any questions? Last time it took about a year and a half to get the answers. It was a, so it was a 12 month period where they collected the data, mm -hmm. but there was probably about three or four months on the front end and about three or four months on the back end. So it was almost a 20 to 22 month process in totality from the time we selected a consultant, had an agreement in place till the time we actually published the results in August of 2017. So I'm, I'm going to hope we can go a little quicker this time because, you know, last time it had been since 1999 since we had done a study. And so almost 20 years, it was a little bit harder. This time we're basing this study on the 2017 study, more of an update of those numbers. So I'm hoping it's going to go a little quicker now. I hope by maybe end of 24 or uh, mid-25, we'll have that published and ready to rock and roll. Okay. What does that study cost? That is a good question, Commissioner. Last time it was $540,000. Um, that was paid for uh, 245 OAC, 245 FAA, and then uh, 25 each from our two uh, large communities, Will Rod or not, not specifically the airports, but the communities, Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So I think that math gives me 490 plus 50, 540. I would, I would expect that number to probably go up a little bit just due to inflation and cost of labor, but I, I don't have a, an estimate at this juncture in time for Who you. Who conducts this study? It's uh, one of the national consulting firms that does that. One of the things we are requiring um, as a part of this study is for them to use the economic modeling team at the Department of Commerce. So Commerce did the economic modeling for us last year and to ensure we have kind of a apples to apples comparison, we want them to do the economic modeling again. So there's there's probably about four or five firms at the national level that do these kinds of, we call them system planning studies. So Javiation, Kimley Horn, CDM Smith, uh, those are the ones that come to mind at the top of my head, but uh, Mead and Hunt. Uh, but there's, there's probably about four or five, maybe six firms that do these kind of state level system planning efforts. Um, Javiation did this one last time. Kimley Horn's done our, our pavement management system uh, as an example. So we've we've utilized virtually all of them to do some kind of system planning activity in the state in the last couple of decades. Well, you plan to bid it? So it's not a it's not a bid um, as as you're dealing with uh, consultant selection for professional services with FAA funds. You select based on your qualifications, then you negotiate your price based on the scope and fee and you do an independent fee estimate by a firm that is not associated with the project to see if your fees are in line with what the industry is expecting. Is there some savings used in the same firm that did it in 2017 that they kind of have a base to, or is it a, a totally? Um, I, don't, I don't know um, if there would be any savings. I would say that at this juncture in time, I can't tell you that we would to not prejudice the selection process, um, but that is, that is a good question. Um, but I think we would probably uh, ask some of those questions in the, uh, the interview process as to what's the, what's the best method. Is it better to stay with the same or is it better to get an independent set of eyes on your economic uh, data? I know, for example, uh, North Dakota did different. So they, they had about a six, seven year spread over their economic impact studies. They did different. It was fine for them. And then we talked to Massachusetts. Massachusetts, they did theirs over a five year difference period. 
and they went with the same, and they said it went well with them too. So it's just going to kind of depend upon uh, how the team feels when we go through the interview process as to which one's going to be better, uh, better route to go. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion for approval? So what, what are we approving here? Are we approving the funds today or just? That, that's a negative. We are simply okay. approving us to move forward with the RFQ process, okay. request for qualifications. Okay. Once we have a quote unquote final scope and fee, we'll bring that back to you. And okay. as soon as we know we'll how much federal that. funds we're going to put towards it and what our state share is going to be required, we'll come back to you. That'll probably be at the earliest March, more likely the May meeting of next year. So this is just to proceed? This is just to proceed through the, the consultant selection process. Do you have any estimates on those figures? In terms of the cost? I, I would say they would probably be around the same as last year, um, if not just a shade higher given inflation and, and labor costs going up since the we contracted that in 2015. Um, it was published in 2017. So you know, eight years of, of labor cost inflations, I would expect that to go up. Probably a little bit of labor hours maybe having gone down. We'll see if that offsets anything. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Item 14. Item 14, um, we have been a lot of places across the state of Oklahoma. We've not had a chance to present to you those places that we've been because our meetings have been so busy this summer. Um, and not that this meeting is any less busy than our summer meetings, but uh, given the end of the year reports that are going to come at our December meeting, we figure we better try and slide this in between here and now or we may, we may forget where we have gone. But uh, as you can see there, starting in May, uh, we have been to many of our airports and talking to them about their capital planning and their strategic planning uh, for the long haul. So Vanita, Miami, and Grove there at the end of May. Uh, of course, at the time, we didn't know about the announcement in Vanita about the America, America's Heartland. Um, and so there's been some new discussions about how do we make the Vanita Airport bigger and better than what we'd even discussed at that point in time. Uh, as an example, Miami. That was uh, that meeting was the fruit of that meeting came from the terminal building that they're currently going through the design process on now. Uh, June 27th, we went to, to Wilburton, McAllister, and Okmulgee and uh, visited with those uh, airports about their CIPs and where they want to go for the foreseeable future. Also had a chance to stop in at Covington while we were at Okmulgee. Uh, Pahuska and Tahlequah on August the 2nd. Uh, you guys just approved some projects here today that were the result of those meetings and talking about their planning efforts that they need uh, at their airports to help them futurize where they're going to go. Uh, Stigler, a uh, virtual meeting on August the 3rd. Uh, Mid-America and Miami, also a couple of virtual strategic planning meetings. Uh, then we were back in person, uh, Hobart and Clinton Sheeran on August 22nd in uh, western Oklahoma followed up with uh, Chattanooga and a virtual visit there to ensure they were still wanting to move forward with the apron project that you guys approved the design cost for here today. Uh, then October on October 4th to talk about their new airport and the relocation efforts for that. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, McAllister on October the 6th. So uh, we've been all across the state. We've been talking to a lot of airports, uh, especially right now we're in CIP season and collecting all those five-year CIPs from the airports. So it's uh, it's, it's crunch time at the office trying to make sure that we have uh, what, what projects are going to go where uh, for the next five years. I'll uh, stand for any questions. All right. Thank you. Hearing none. Item 15, FAA Workforce 625. Paula Key. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Thank you. As you remember, probably at the last meeting, I mentioned that we had put to close the, the implementation of the FAA 625 Pilot Workforce Development Grant. The grant we received about a year and a half ago uh, was just under a half a million dollars for the purpose of aviation education. Uh, but Director Ardee's asked that I mention to you a little bit, of, take a little deeper dive into what those monies did for aviation education and for uh, our students in the state of Oklahoma. 
Uh, to begin with, uh, you may recall that we developed five aviation high schools of excellence. Uh, Pryor, McAllister, Oakmulgee, Ada, and Mustang. At the time, those schools were further down the AOPA implementation pathway and had some very strong established programs. So one of the things we did with some of those grant funds was to uh, infuse their aviation laboratories with some equipment, some supplies. You see Mr. Wadsworth and, and Michelle there in those pictures. Bless this team, as director mentioned earlier, has done more than would have ever been expected of them to do uh, in the implementation of this grant. Uh, there they are at the warehouse meeting the school personnel to pick up simulators and drones and the things that they got to uh, put in those five aviation high schools of excellence. So I'm very appreciative. One of the really important things that those five schools did was we used them as hubs. So instead of having huge statewide events, which we had those as well, but each of those uh, aviation high schools of excellence held their own STEM aviation days. They got to meet with pilots, uh, secondary, post-secondary uh, aviation schools. They've got to participate in lots of hands-on activities. The third thing you'll see right there is uh, that's the superintendent of more public schools, Robert Romines at the simulator there. And uh, Mr. Eckler from Ada High School has opened his door. I wish I had kept track, but probably to about 50 of our 87 high schools that have trekked to Ada to talk and visit with him about implementation. Uh, same was true with Pryor, same is true with Mustang. In fact, last week I got a call from um, a lady with premium aerospace at, at Burns Flat saying, we went to Pryor yesterday with the Burns Flat superintendent. We're real excited to mix our workforce and our schools together and Pryor opened their doors to us. So the same as that's going on, they don't even tell me. Uh, they're on their own as established hubs of information and mentoring and that's exactly what we wanted to happen. Uh, so, so that was great. Um, we also were able to hold a superintendent and counselor expo. We held it with our partners at the Choctaw Nation and Southeastern Aviation. We brought those superintendent, AOPA superintendents and counselors in. We talked to them about how to develop airport partnerships, how to order supplies. Michelle visited with them about uh, the grant program. We got to really hands-on with those school leaders uh, and host that summit for them, a day summit there in Durant uh, last, it's been over a year ago now, uh, so that went very well. We also were able to hold two, um, I know you know that AOPA asked us to host their training, their curriculum training in Oklahoma. We're still the only state other than uh, Maryland where the headquarters of AOPA in Frederick, we're the only state that hosts the, the training. So we hosted a training in July of 22 and in June of 23 at OU, uh, we're very appreciative of OU Aviation who gave all those teachers a flight. Uh, we were, were appreciative of Tinker who will open the doors for those two teachers to visit and then they spent three full days. We were able to pay the lodging. Uh, you see Director Widra there. Um, again, very strong partnership. You see the teachers in that bottom corner. Uh, lots and lots of positive uh, things went on. We also held two different planes on the plane celebration banquets. Um, and all these things, when I say them, they sound e easy <laughs> to implement. Uh, it took lots and lots of hours and lots of time by the people that you see here behind me uh, to make sure that these went off, off smoothly. But we're very proud to say, that, and I did talk to AOPA this week. We're on for June 3rd for our third uh, AOPA training at OU this summer. But you look at that picture of those teachers engaged, what they're doing is doing the very same lab activities that the high school kids do in that curriculum so that they're learning to uh, go back and, and teach with fidelity. What you see there is our UAS, our drone two-day workshop at, the Oklahoma St at Oklahoma State University. The teachers, ha again, had lodging that we were able to pay because of the grant. Oklahoma State did a beautiful job of, of preparing for this conference. The teachers got to build drones. 
Uh, you can see how cold it was at the unmanned airfield uh, when we were putting some of those drones in the air. But look at the faces on those teachers and engage, how engaged they are, and then to go back then in their classrooms and be able to work with those kids. So very, very uh, strong program for drones and UAS. And then uh, we held our first ever, ever Oklahoma Student Pilot Day last April at Tulsa International and Tulsa Air and Space Museum. Uh, those are some of our AOPA students uh, speaking on a panel, talking about how many flight hours they have and where they plan to go after high school graduation. Uh, so it was a, it was a remarkable day. Uh, we had about uh, 500 students there that day. That's a young man from Mustang, right. uh, Antonin Stoddard, who has already uh, been accepted to Southeastern Aviation and is ready to go next fall. Uh, lots of really good things happening. And then there's, there's the, that was last spring that first group, and I'll talk to you more uh, shortly about how this year's event went. But it was a year and a half of implementation, a lot of great activities, and I, I really and honestly, from my heart, can say, I think we'll look back at this and say those funds, and I think it's exactly what the FAA would want to happen, those funds propelled us to a new place uh, for aerospace and aviation education in Oklahoma. And I think we then took it, and, and Director Artes, to, to his definite credit, said, we're going to keep on with those activities. We've got to. We've established them through that grant. We're going to move on, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. But I'll stand for any questions about the FAA grant, should you have any. Is there another one behind it? <laughs> yes, there will be. We haven't written it yet, but we hope, we hope to, yes. Uh, when they roll out uh, the next we'll opportunity, it, we will ride. I wrote that the bulk of that last one with April uh, Milloway Axton from OU, and we put that together. And she and I are good partners in that grant writing process, so assume that we that we will. Good. Any other questions? All right. Following on. Aerospace and Aviation Education Program update. Okay, for the regular, uh, the regular work uh, that we've been doing, I did have the opportunity in August to go to Devon, the Devon Tower, and speak, uh, give the keynote address to the Choctaw Nation school superintendents. And so it was really great for me to have all of them in one room. And I've had several calls since then and had several school visits after I spoke at the luncheon that day saying, can you come? One lady uh, from Savannah High School, south of McAllister, I'm sitting here listening to you speak. She texted me and I'm wondering why I didn't know about this and what can I do to get on board? And so, you know, it's every opportunity I have to go speak or visit with, uh, gives us even more opportunities down the line. So that, that was a great day. Then on uh, in September 23rd, we had Girls in Aviation Day in conjunction with Boeing and AAR and Sandra Watt, 500 young ladies about uh, at Girls in Aviation Day. And uh, man, and their parents, uh, they visited booths, they listened to the panel. Again, those are, those are young lady flight students from Ada, Yukon, and Mustang on that stage that day. And uh, they did a remarkable job. So we were glad to be able to partner with Boeing. And there you see a group uh, those are the Ada young ladies, I believe, uh, brought a large group to AAR that day. We followed that pretty quickly <laughs> with uh, Oklahoma Student Flight T Day Part 2. Take a look at that. Wow. <laughs> I, I can only say that day was, I don't know for me, one of the most remarkable days I've ever had because, well, number one, we had a huge, you can see the corner of the circus tent at the back of that picture. We, we got a call at about 6.30 in the morning, or I'm not sure when, that part of during the night the storm had made part of the tent collapse and that we would not be allowed to have the students under the tent for liability reasons. So at 7 o'clock at Tulsa International, and that's the Air and Space Museum you see there, we do what everyone always says is call in the National Guard. <laughs> and they took down the 1,000 chairs that were already set up underneath that circus tent. 
because they wouldn't allow us to be there and reset the chairs up there on the parking lot of Tulsa Air and Space Museum before schools got there at 8.15. Turned out to be uh, beautiful weather. The storm had passed. Uh, the kids just had a remarkable day. And, and I, I will say, I looked out at them and you know, someone might drive by there and go, it's a bunch of kids on a field trip. It wasn't a bunch of kids on a field trip. It was kids with a purpose. Uh, to be there and to learn more about their future and what they were hoping to do. So it was, it was a great day. That's just a, right under 1,000 students that, that were at Oklahoma Student Flight Day. And then finally, um, and I would be remiss if I did not think the uh, 138th Air National Guard, they did more than take the chairs down. They opened their doors, as did Tulsa Air and Space Museum, uh, with booths and lots of activities for, for the students. And then finally on that, uh, on October 13th, Michelle and I went to a Choose Aerospace Industry Workshop in Tulsa. And what's neat about this is that uh, the Tulsa Aerospace Council has agreed to work with schools that are teaching or implementing Choose Aerospace maintenance curriculum by sending a Nordam representative, a Spirit representative, an American, a LaFonza representative, to those schools when those students are doing the labs so that those a and certified folks from the industry will be in those school classrooms. That's a remarkable gift from Tulsa Air and Space because, uh, Council because they, those teachers really need the support of industry personnel. So they have that working. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor was there, there that day as well and further uh, complimented the work that we're doing in aviation education. As to school visits, quickly, I know you have had a long afternoon, but I have visited El Reno Juvenile Justice Center, which was interesting. The lady heard me speak and she said, we're an alternative school. Can we hear about this curriculum? And I said, definitely. So I went out to El Reno to uh, the alternative school at the Justice Center. They said, we want high engaging STEM curriculum for our students and we're really considering this. And so they would be our first in that arena uh, to look at it in, in that regard. Uh, again, I went to Savannah Public Schools, Idabel, India Homa, and I loved what the India Homa superintendent said. It's about 15 miles west of Lawton, and I got in his office that morning, and I said, Superintendent, how many do you graduate? And he said, I said, five. And he said, yes, but Paula, we're gonna do this. My kids deserve this as much as any student at Mustang or Yukon or wherever, and I said, you're exactly right. And so they're gonna work, and they have lots of resources in the Lawton area to help them implement a program, but it made me very happy to know that we are making things more equitable for our schools in Oklahoma. <clears throat> Visited with Woodward Public Schools. Uh, Commissioner Hunter and I had lunch with the new Piedmont Public School Superintendent to, to talk about partnerships um, with Sundance and moving forward in, in that area uh, of Oklahoma City. I visited with Beth Bethany Public School, Silo, Hugo. I did uh, <clears throat> have a joint meeting at the Ardmore Workforce Development Board, and they brought in Plainview and Lone Grove and Southern Tech um, and, and had a really strong meeting there. I had another meeting with Osage Nation superintendents in Hominy, and many of them are interested as well. And then finally, uh, ended this report with Blackwell uh, Public Schools just a couple of weeks ago. So lots of interest, um, lots more schools. I'm quite certain we'll be past the 100 schools mark. Uh, not that the number is what's important to me, it's the quality of it. And, our, and, I, and I appreciate your understanding that these 100 schools need a lot of mentorship, a lot of phone calls, a lot of help. And these are the folks that have, have uh, helped in that regard so much stand for any questions that you might have. Outstanding accomplishment. Well, thank you. It's really thank remarkable. You. Let's get her some help. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get on that. <laughs> thank you. Sandra, talk about partnering with Oklahoma Air and Space Force Association, <coughs> Women in Aviation, luncheon. It's kind of hard to go after Paula. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, commissioners, um, we're gonna talk a little bit first about Oklahoma Women in Aviation and Aerospace Day. 
Staff is seeking approval of a $10,000 sponsorship for the 2024 Oklahoma Women in Aviation and Aerospace Day event being held on December 8th in Oklahoma City. In honor of the significant impact women have made in aviation in our state and to our industry, the Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics in community partnership with the 137th Special Operations Wing, the Oklahoma National Guard, Will Rogers World Airport, the Oklahoma Air and Space Forces Association, the Oklahoma Defense Industry Association, and United Dynamics Aerospace and Defense will commemorate the state's seventh annual Oklahoma Women in Aviation and Aerospace Day with an in-person luncheon at the 137th Special Operations Wing um, at the Oklahoma National Guard Base. We've been working on this since July. Paula and Michelle are with me on this, and Andrea and Director Artes and Chris has also helped with this. And this is a major undertaking. This is the largest um, event that we will have ever planned at this level. We're expecting 1,000 people. Um, the event is already halfway sold out in what we call pre-sales through sponsorships. And we have 30 schools that will be attending this year. We had to limit the number of students to um, 30 schools. And so they get to bring eight students each school does. So uh, that's going to be um, interesting to see how that works out. I will tell you this, that if you want to come that day, I, I would like for you to contact Andrea and let her know everyone who comes on the base has to be registered and they have to have their names. So for instance, Commissioner Rainey, if you're bringing Anna, we need to have all those names because you have to be on the list. If you're not on the list, you'll be turned away. So uh, we appreciate Commissioner Hunter and his partnership with us with Sundance Airport. There's several people and entities that are helping us. Uh, Department of Commerce is helping us and so many others. And so this $10,000, commissioners, is only in case uh, we get in a bind and we need some extra funding at the end uh, to make sure that we have met our catering obligations and as well as tables and chair rentals. I'm sure that you realize that we could probably do this cheaper in an airport, but it gets people out to the airfield. And I don't know if you've been to the 137th, but Southwest Airlines takes off right there, right outside the gate. 250 students are going to watch the flight line as it rips across past AAR, and AAR is going to be a great partner with us this year. Also, um, our breakout sessions are going to be in aircraft this year. We have a C-17 coming from Altus Air Force Base, Commissioner Ortega, and we're excited about that. So the students will actually sit on the C-17 and have their little breakout session at 10 a.m. Colonel Eileen Collins is our Woman of the Year. She was tra a trainer at um, Vance Air Force Base for five years, and she has a brand new book out called Breaking the Glass Ceiling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people from the FAA, Commissioner Ritz, are going to be there with us, including Rob Lowe, not that Rob Lowe, but uh, the good Fort Rob Lowe. Fort Worth Rob Lowe. Yeah, the important Rob Lowe. <coughs> and not that the other Rob Lowe's yeah. not important. But anyway, uh, so I would just recommend that if, if you would please be so gracious as to um, just set aside this $10,000 given uh, we might need it, we might not and uh, Director Artes and I will report back to you at the December commission meeting if we spend it, of course. But we want to be good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. And we have about 60 community partners with us. So the industry is doing their part. And so we are so grateful for them for that as well. So I would yield for any questions or comments. How is that determined? Is it all everybody's fair share to come up with our 10,000, everybody else is putting in that same kind of money, or how does that come up with it? We have sponsorship levels, and it's based on other sponsorship levels um, that, that is sort of the industry standard. Okay. And so um, the sponsorship levels, you get tickets with that, and you also get an ad in our program, and so that, that determines that. Okay. This will be held at the AAR hangar or on the National Guard side? This is going to be at the National Guard, the 137th Special Operations Wing, on December 8th, 10 a.m. Um, there will be a VIP reception for our community partners and for our commissioners, where Colonel Collins will give a, a brief, and she'll also sign her book. So we're excited about that. And while, while you guys are doing that, the general public will go to our breakout sessions, and we have incredible speakers lined out for, for students and industry professionals. Any further questions? I would entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Commissioners, um, item 18, 
I'd like to bring to your attention, please. I guess you probably noted today is our last day as the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. Uh, the legislature has bestowed us with the gift of becoming a department, uh, the Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics. We're changing over all of our branding tomorrow. Chris has worked really hard on that, and you'll see our social media changing as well. With that, we are given a greater challenge by the legislature, and with that comes great responsibility. We are the lead agency in the state of Oklahoma for all things aviation and aerospace. Because aerospace is trending, we have people come to us and they say, hey, we want to partner with you. Someone has come to us and asked for a partnership from us. And uh, before you gasp at the price, it's going to be okay. Uh, aerospace Week in April is going to center around the 2024 Aero Oklahoma event. And the Innovation District has come to us and asked for a partnership where they will um, make the entire week aerospace centric. And they are going to have their own event. And uh, they are also going to work with the Thunder Book Bus. They're going to have a tech talk. Um, they're going to have an aerospace innovative training summit. The ACES program is going to have a career fair. And then they're going to have a night with the Dodgers and then a UAS festival at Scissor Tail Park. So what this branding is for pushes the Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics to the forefront as the leader of all things aviation and aerospace. So I am asking you, commissioners, that you please consider a monetary um, sponsorship of $25,000 for the entire week. And that also gives us a sponsorship over the luncheon that they're going to be hosting that week as well. I have more specific details if you'd like those details. Um, I'm happy to yield to any questions. But there will also be like editorials in the Oklahoman, uh, articles with the Oklahoma City Chamber of Velocity, and um, PR and other things like that. So I have a list of deliverables if you want to see those. Chamber of Velocity? I don't know, Commissioner Putnam. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> That's why I asked. It's new. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? They gave me this one because this was the hard one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all voted and I do the, uh, the little straw. Short straw. <laughs> if not, do I entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Aye. Mr. Potter. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. We will continue to work very hard to make this worth our while. Thank you. Okay. Legislative Congressional and Regulatory Update. All right, I'm going to take uh, items A, D, and E, and Sandra, I think you're, you're up for B and C. Um, as, uh, as you mentioned, Sandra, on uh, the previous item, our name change is effective tomorrow. So we will no longer be the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. We'll be the Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics. And yours truly is going to have the hardest time making that change. Um, I have struggled mildly with it. I'm sure everyone else will struggle a little bit with it, too. Um, but the, the OAC and the Aeronautics Commission is just, it's ingrained in there. It's the software, it's the hardware. We're going to have to have a full reboot, uh, Commissioner Hunter. I don't know if you have any software guys that can work on that for me, but <laughs> you're, you're the inventor, so I, I think I'll leave it to you. Let fingers in the socket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's, th this is an amazing time. Um, you all will still be the commission. You'll be the Aerospace and Aeronautics Commission, but you'll still be the commission. You'll be the governing board over the department, um, and uh, I would encourage you to, to utilize that. Uh, obviously, our acronym is no longer OAC. It'll be the ODAA, um, and we're just going to see how that goes. I, I've been using the department as just the, the short lingo for, for the agency. Um, maybe we'll move to ODAA. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see how it goes. But uh, there's a lot of things happening, uh, new business cards, new letters, new shirts. Uh, it's, it's offering us an opportunity to rebrand the organization and refresh a lot of the things that we need to refresh. And so um, 
want to give a special thanks and shout out to, to Senator Racino and uh, Representative Hilbert, who uh, held this legislation for us uh, this past legislative session. Um, I think this will provide us a, a fundamental platform launch pad, you might say, uh, for us to, to do great things and continue to do the great things that we're doing as an agency and also get that recognition that uh, we, the agency, and that the team that works for the agency so deserves. So, Sandra, bring you back up for, for item B. Commissioners, Senate Bill 930 was the aerospace legislation that was um, presented to the Oklahoma legislature in the early spring of this year. And uh, it is my great pleasure to say that it made the Reed Report. And uh, you might recall that this is the aerospace program that is exactly what Choose Aerospace and AOPA are going through. And hopefully the legislature will recognize this and maybe provide a little extra funding in the 2024 um, legislative session. But the Reed Report um, is something that is considered to be very pro-business friendly. And Senator Racino called me and said that this bill had made the Reed Report. And so uh, we're just very proud of that legislation. This is model legislation to the nation nationally. And um, we're excited that it made the Reed Report. Also, um, I had the pleasure of speaking at an interim study for Women, Business, and Positive Change on September 26th in the Oklahoma State Senate. The study was presented by Senator Mary Boren, and I had the opportunity to talk about exactly what the law uh, for women in aviation did, Senate Bill 230, during the 2017 legislative session when it passed. And you may recall that uh, Governor Fallon was the governor at that time, and she was a student pilot and signed the bill into law. And it has been monumental in um, encouraging young girls to explore aviation and aerospace careers. I can't tell you how many people have written to me and said, hey, you know, I attended this event and, I, and now I'm going to school at OU or OSU to study pilot training and because they attended an event. So um, I'm just so grateful for that and I, it was such a pleasure and an honor to get to speak to that. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. It was um, a great day for women in aviation and aerospace and women in the state of Oklahoma. Director. We also had the uh, distinct pleasure of organizing a tour for Chairman John Haste and, and his committee members uh, of the Tulsa area. And we were able to go see L3 Harris, BizJet, Latunza Technique, and Spirit Aerosystems on October 13th. Uh, the picture there you see is at um, Latunza Techniques and BizJet's facility. That's uh, us standing in front of the Pratt & Whitney geared turbo fan engine. Uh, their engine shop there, um, and that's that's what they do. They do business jet engines, they do commercial jet engines, uh, and they do it really, really well uh, for their, their clientele. It's an amazing opportunity to take those senators and staffers around to, to see the, the aerospace industry up there in Tulsa, and we'll continue doing that this Thursday, uh, which we'll report on at our next meeting uh, here in the Oklahoma City metro area. Uh, last thing that I want to uh, talk about on this uh, particular item is uh, some of the federal uh, activities that have taken place. Obviously, we now have a new FA administrator, Michael Whitaker. Um, he is uh, no, no stranger to the FAA, and I think most of the industry uh, and states are in FAA themselves are glad to have somebody back at the helm after, uh, I think it was 18, 18 months, months of having interims or temporaries. Um, and, and that's no way to run the finest aviation system in the world. And so I think we're, we're glad to have Michael Whitaker back at the helm. Uh, we also obviously have a, a speaker, Speaker of the House. Um, and so we're very hopeful that some of the federal pending legislation like the FA reauthorization bill will be dealt with uh, between now and the end of the year, fingers crossed. But I don't plan on betting my next paycheck that it's going to happen. Um, but I will always be hopeful that uh, our nation's capital can get that figured out along with some of the budgetary challenges that I know that are ongoing. So that being said, uh, commissioners, that's the end of 19. I'll stand for any questions. If you have anything of Sandra and I. Moving on to 20, legislative agenda. 
Item number 20, as we uh, do with you uh, every year, we seek your approval for some of the legislative initiatives that we will go after. Um, of course, this list tends to, to shrink and grow as we get into bill filing season and as we get into the start of legislative season, there might be other ideas that people have come up with that they want our support on or they want us to run. Um, and so, but the four you see before you today are fixing the engineer tax credits for aerospace. Um, the, the main issue is the tax commission has seen it uh, fit that if uh, you switch companies uh, between the five years, the five year window that you're eligible for the tax credit as either a new employee out of college or, or a new employee to the state of Oklahoma, uh, you no longer get the remainder of the tax credit. So if you're coming out of college and you work for Boeing for two years, and then you moved over to Lockheed Martin, um, unfortunately, you don't get the rest of the three years of that tax credit because you're no longer a new employee to the industry. Uh, that was never the intent of legislation. The intent was to have five years of the tax credit to incentivize those engineers to either come to the state or stay in the state for those five years. And so we're, we're going to seek our legislature's change to ensure the tax commission uh, sees that as it was intended. Uh, item B, the unmanned aircraft systems advanced air mobility industry obviously has a lot of moving parts. Uh, there's a couple of bills out there, a couple ideas that have been tossed our way. Of course, our HNTV partners that are doing the strategic plan for advanced mobility uh, in the state, both air and ground, are uh, looking at some of those items. And so we will have a advanced air mobility unmanned aircraft systems uh, reform bill uh, that we're going to go before the legislature this year. Item C is Space Day and statute. As you know, uh, Women in Aviation Day, Aerospace in Aviation Day have all been thanks to days that we recognize in statute. Um, Space Day uh, obviously is one of those things that we have not hit, and we're going to try and maybe do that this year. And then last but not least is aviation fuel system reform. Um, for some reason, Oklahoma, the way we install fuel systems is a little different than other states, and so we are going to seek some reform to the way aviation fuel installers uh, have to install fuel tanks here in Oklahoma. Um, given the, the increased presence of the OAC funds, um, ODAA funds, uh, going into fuel systems across the state, uh, we're going to, we don't want to be able to have some of those regulatory burdens of bollards and fuel si uh, s fencing systems around the fuel system. Um, and some of the other uh, interesting quirks that uh, our Corporation Commission has. So we're going to look at maybe some reform on aviation fuel. So those are the four items before you today. Um, if we have any more items, that we will bring those to you at the December or the January meetings. But uh, this is where our legislative slate is today. Staff recommends approval. Any questions? Well, item D, uh, any of this tied into the new uh, uh, unleaded aviation fuel? No, sir, this is not the type of fuel. This is actually the installation of the fuel tank. So it's designed to make it easier, simpler? It's designed to make it easier, less costly, uh, those sorts of things. And sure. so we've been visiting with some of our consulting friends that do business in the states that surround Oklahoma. And Oklahoma seems to be the only way, the only one to do it the way that we do it. And that drives up our cost anywhere from 5 to 25 percent is the highest I've heard. So Ouch. we're, uh, we're going to try and reform some of that. And it may be... Maybe reform is not the right word, but standardized because sometimes it's if you have this one, if you have this one inspector, they do it this way, but then over on this part of the state, they do it that way. And so we're going to try maybe standardize the way we do aviation fuel system installations. Okay. Other questions? Do I hear a motion for approval? I move for approval. Go ahead. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thanks. Next up is item 21, schedule for 2024. Yes, ma'am. So before you today are the proposed dates for the regularly, regularly scheduled meetings for calendar year 2024. I believe over the past month, Andrea has reached out to most of you to get some feedback and kind of check your schedules. Uh, we have done our best to incorporate that feedback into these proposed dates. However, if there's been any changes or you, you all have any proposed uh, dates that you'd like to revise, we can certainly entertain that at this time. Otherwise, staff recommends approval to set these dates for the regularly scheduled meetings for 2024.
Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Director Ardis. Maceo Convention Report and Annual Dues. So uh, Naseo this year was hosted in Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, just a quick drive up the uh, the turnpike and uh, over over across the way. Um, we were extremely glad to see uh, our friends in Arkansas host the conference this year. I know when we hosted it in 2018, it was uh, it was a fun event and getting to showcase your home state and your home area is is always exciting. Um, heard a lot of uh, a lot of good things, especially on the advanced air mobility sector. Um, given some of the partnerships of, of Walmart and some of the other drone company, drone delivery companies up there in Northwest Oklahoma, Northwest Arkansas and Northeast Oklahoma. Um, this year, because it was so close and we were able to travel via road, we got to bring a few more people than usual. Usually I try and limit us to four staff. We were able to bring six this time and it was a great opportunity to discuss uh, with our closest brethren, the, the other state aviation officials from around the country. And I have to say, we are uh, certainly the envy of a lot in terms of our money that we are receiving in recent, uh, recent memory, as well as our aviation education accolades to our advanced air mobility things. You, you name it, people are jealous of what Oklahoma has to do. In fact, I think I spent about, if I wasn't telling the story of Oklahoma, I was telling people what they should be doing based on things that we've had successes on or, or failures on. And so it was, uh, Certainly a, a lot of conversations and a, and a great time. And of course, we are seeking your approval for next year's dues of 11750 uh, Staff recommends approval. Questions? Motion to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. Sandra, upcoming aviation aerospace events. Commissioners, we had a great year of flying this summer uh, during the flying season. Uh, Will Rogers and Riley Post fly-in was held at Will Rogers Birthplace Ranch in Ulaga, where Kelly from Cannon set up the uh, Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics booth. And National Aviation Day was August 19th, where Sundance Airport hosted the Okie Derby presented by the Oklahoma Chapter of 99s. Um, the Oklahoma Municipal League held a conference where the Oklahoma Department of Aeronautics and Aerospace, Aerospace and Aeronautics set up a booth. And then uh, the University of Oklahoma Mac Westheimer annual aviation breakfast was held September 22nd. Back to Bartlesville fly-in, Commissioner Potter, was held September 22nd through 23rd. And they had over 50 aircraft and 2,300 visitors. So we are so proud of Bartlesville for doing that. And then El Reno fly-in was held September 30th. Um, the Aerospace Forum is going to be held November 8th. If any of you would like to attend, would you please let Andrea know? And we will make sure that you uh, get a ticket to that as well. And as well, don't forget about Oklahoma Women in Aviation and Aerospace Day, December 8th. And I will keep you informed on anything else that might be coming around the corner. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Chair, Commissioners. All right. Oh, there we go. Now we're on. Thank you, Merrick. Uh, item 24, uh, we're going to seek the uh, convening of an executive session to discuss the uh, denied APA application Delaware-2023-001, uh, where our legal counsel has determined that the disclosure of information related to the potential anticipated litigation will seriously impair the ability of the board to process or conduct litigation in this matter. Uh, provided that any action shall be taken in open session. Uh, Madam Chair, 
I would uh, recommend we look to take action on item A. All right. Uh, I need to entertain a motion to convene executive session. Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. <coughs> I think most people are leaving, but I'd like to request that uh, all guests leave. Just the commissioners, Director Artie, and agency council, please. Acknowledge return to open session. Do I hear a motion? I so move to return to open session. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you. We have a quorum. <coughs> Director? I uh, welcome to uh, entertain any motions on uh, action regarding uh, the subject of the executive session. I would recommend that we uh, vote to uh, send a, an immediate cease and desist and a second vote that we would uh, file for an injunctive action in district court. Okay, so two votes. Do I hear a second? Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. Abstain. <clears throat> Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Ready for item 25. Item 25. Is that clear us on both counts? That, yeah, I think we're we clear the way vote both. on both items. Yeah, because we, we rolled them together. Votes. Votes. Right. Okay. Okay. So, as long as we've conveyed the authority. Absolutely. We've, the authority has been conveyed. Thank you. So, item 25 um, is a discussion and possible action concerning state grant assurances regarding the compliance for the city of Grove. Uh, in the Grove Regional Airport as it relates to past, present, and future state airport grants. Um, obviously, as, as a part of the overall situation of what's happening in the runway protection zone at the Grove Regional Airport, um, the, the city is the official sponsor of the airport. They are the official uh, entity that signs the OAC and the FAA. Yes, I can still say OAC because it was past grants. The OAC and the FAA grants um, they are the official sponsor as recognized by both of us, uh, but they do have a airport trust authority which operates the airport on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, at the end of the day, though, the mayor and the city council are the ones that approve the, the grants, and, and so therefore they are seen as the airport sponsor. Um, I have had uh, conversations with the city uh, with, this, with respect to this particular issue and this particular item within the runway protection zone since uh, the early to mid February time frame, and and I am I'm very uh, I'll say I'm a little disappointed in the city's desire to try and be a reasonable uh, player in solving this issue. Um, obviously, there's there's two different particular items that we're talking about. One as it relates to height, and the other as it relates to land use. Um, while the FAA obstruction evaluation process deals with height. Uh, it does not deal with land use. That's why in the grant assurances, FA convenes to the local authority that you must have proper land use control in your communities to protect your airport. Uh, land use control is, is something that, it's not recent memory, but it's come about since the 80s. Um, and that's why we've passed APA uh, and have the legal authority that we do uh, within the Aircraft Pilot and Passenger Protection Act to permit or deny uh, structures either from a height perspective or from a land use perspective. Um, at this juncture in time, you know, Grove, I know there's been, I've been to a city council meeting in uh, the end of May. Uh, there's been some communication between us and the city. However, it has been a little bit sparingly from time to time. 
uh, we are still willing to work with the city to figure out a way to acquire the property uh, for the entity that is in question here. Uh, that at the end of the day, we have denied the permit. It is now on the city's responsibility, city and airport's responsibility to go in and buy that particular piece of property. I have said many times over that <clears throat> there is the appraisal process and the appraisal process is what the FAA can, can buy the property for and that appraisal process is bet, highest and best use valuation based on the known quantities of, of what is taking place on that property and the restrictions within that property. Um, at the end of the day though, uh, the FAA and, and certainly in past circumstances when they know there's a, uh, a challenging uh, land acquisition forthcoming that uh, they would also be willing to include future or potential uh, attorney's costs on the city's behalf to be included in that land acquisition cost. And so we've seen, for example, uh, there was a piece of property, I think it was in southern Oklahoma, where they acquired the property for the appraised value but then added on another $150,000 of attorney's fees because that's what they expected if they were to have to go the eminent domain route. And so the FAA allowed them to do that. That sweetened the pot enough. FAA said, okay, that's great. Grove Regional Airport has FAA money available to them. Uh, we'd even be willing to help them find other FAA money. You know there's non-primary entitlement transfers that happen across the, the state. <clears throat> if airports aren't using their money, I would see no better project than to put some FAA money at than, than this one. But, but again, it takes a city <coughs> that is willing to take those steps and move forward. So um, as, as I have uh, mentioned earlier in this agenda item, the city has said they've made, a land, ma made an offer for the purchase of the land for the appraisal price. They've not received a counter offer. I have yet to see that uh, offer in writing, but uh, we have a couple of options here concerning compliance for state grant assurances. Uh, obviously, we have very similar grant assurances to the federal government in that we require our airport sponsors to ensure they adequately control their runway protection zones and that they do everything within their power to, to control those items. Um, right now, Grove is in a status of in compliance we would follow the FAA's compliance status. There's a couple other statuses. One is in compliance with conditions. Uh, one is in non-compliance with conditions. And then of course, yeah, the last is just purely uh, in non-compliance. Um, to give you a little bit of information, uh, recently, Commissioner, uh, we paid about $138,000 for an AWAS system at Grove, and that was recently paid out within the last 12 months. You all have approved a grant for the Grove Runway, awarded $178,000. We've only paid about $4,200 to date. We do have an invoice sitting on Michelle's desk for about $44,000. Uh, that project has come to, come to a conclusion or is about to come to a conclusion. So I would expect the remaining 120 some odd thousand dollars to be invoiced to us here in the next three to four months as the conclusion of that project comes. Um, but up for discussion is, <clears throat> you know, the next step if we were going by the FAA book would be to find the, the airport sponsor in conditional compliance, the conditions being that they continue to make uh, forthright and acceptable efforts to acquire the property. Uh, and at that, in, in, in doing so, uh, we will withhold, not, not, not rescind the grant, but withhold the current grant funds until such time as property is acquired. Um, that would be the traditional next step in the continuum uh, if we were going down this process like the FAA. If that does not happen, then obviously we'd move into a uh, non-compliance with conditions. That means no more future projects uh, until they've met the conditions. And of course, non-compliance just means they're basically uh, no longer a participant in the Oklahoma airport system. So those are kind of the four compliance statuses that uh, we would see um, as, as staff, um, I would make a recommendation for that uh, option that I had just mentioned, a conditional compliance status uh, with the conditions being that they make the forthright and acceptable efforts to move forward and acquire that land using any and all means necessary at the city. Uh, and we will uh, hold their grant funds uh, in, in our account until such time as they've met those conditions. It's not simply a matter of them putting forth the effort. They have to resolve it. They have to resolve it, correct. Yeah. Would there be so. a time limit? 
Um, at this juncture in time, I do not have a time limit. Um, what I would say is if we don't see some forthright action here in the next two to three months, um, I would probably come back to you at the January meeting and, and seek maybe a, a, set, a different conditional aspect, different conditional compliance aspect. Is there an option to withhold funding for the upcoming $147,000 or whatever that they're expecting to have written to them? Well, that, that's what I'm recommending. Upcoming invoice? That, that's what I'm recommending, Commissioner. So my, that, my conditions would be not to just simply withdraw and cancel the grant, but to just withhold that as a condition of successfully completing the pro property purchase. Okay. And if not, then you come back. And if not, then we would have another future discussion about what, what future actions the commission should take. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? <coughs> Sounds appropriate. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. approval with con conditions. We're in compliance with conditions. Compl compliance with conditions. And the conditions being what we've discussed. Make it so. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I move that uh, the, the commission give them a rating of in compliance with conditions. I hear a second. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Phillips. I have to abstain again. <clears throat> Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Chairwoman Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. That uh, certainly is not the fun aspect of what we do as an agency, um, but it is a serious and necessary aspect given that we're dealing with public dollars and we have to ensure the fundamental investment of those public dollars. It's a two-way street. It's not just us giving away money, but it is those that we give away money to making sure they operate in a, in a satisfactory manner. And now on to the director's report. I know we're uh, coming up on uh, two hours and 20 minutes in this meeting, so I'll try and make this uh, quick and expedient and uh, maybe save a few of these for our December uh, end of the year meeting. Uh, but we'll do, uh, <clears throat> let's get through August and we'll save the September and Octobers for a uh, future meeting if that's okay with you, Commissioners. Uh, June 16th to the 23rd, we were at the uh, Paris Air Show with the Department of Commerce and about 60 other Oklahoma officials from companies like ATS and Kratos. Uh, and CTS and uh, PASS, uh, you name it, uh, we were there. Uh, had about uh, 70 meetings throughout the course of the three day, three or four days that we were at the Paris Air Show. Wow. Uh, I know Commissioner Phillips and Commissioner Rainey were able to attend for at least a day each. In experience that, I will say that the temperature was uh, much better than uh, Farm Borough two years ago, where it was 105. <laughs> The the air conditioner actually worked in that building and uh, worked so well we actually had to have jackets for the most time. Uh, but no, it was a great opportunity to talk about Oklahoma on the world stage. As you see there, Governor Stitt there, our fearless leader in the middle, uh, was able to to sell the state of Oklahoma while we were there on the on the global stage. Uh, they also had several uh, legislators that were in attendance. Uh, you see uh, Chairman Wallace uh, there. Uh, you also have Chairman Haste in the picture, uh, Representative Kyle Hilbert, Speaker Pro Tem Hilbert was there, and Representative Nick Archer uh, was, was also there. And so we had a, a good, good representation, and uh, I will say the Department of Commerce put those folks to work. Um, they were in, you know, six to ten meetings a day, back to back to back to back. Um, it, it's, not a, uh, it's not a light uh, travel opportunity. You are moving from one meeting to the next, uh, traveling quite frequently. The next, of course, is, is Oshkosh, uh, our uh, general aviation uh, opportunity to talk to some of our uh, more grassroots folks. Uh, there you have uh, some of the ADA, the ADA folks that I had the pleasure of taking a picture with in front of the, the big sign at Oshkosh and the EA Air Venture. Uh, had a had a wonderful opportunity to talk with more companies. We had about 15 meetings uh, set up specifically uh, at the at the air show, and uh, had a had an awesome opportunity there to, to talk with the ADA folks. And they were able to share the Fly Oklahoma story from the AOPA perspective at one of the uh, the AOPA signature events. And so that was a, a, a an awesome for those three kids to get to talk about their their pathway uh, on aerospace education. Uh, follow that up with Tinker in the Primes, August 8th through the 10th. Uh, we had our second annual 
Women in Aeronautics Night, right? Second Annual Women in Aeronautics Night uh, to discuss uh, all things women in the aerospace and aviation workplace. Uh, awesome opportunity there to hear from base leadership, uh, from our prime contractors and our second and third tier contractors at Tinker, Tinker and the Primes. Uh, it was also the last time I got to see uh, a certain general um, with us and that, that was a, a somber moment. Uh, didn't, you just never know when you see someone for the last time and that was uh, my last interaction with the, the general. Um, item D, uh, Select Oklahoma. Uh, Conference on Economic Development, August 8th, 28th to the 29th. Uh, this is the economic developers of the state of Oklahoma that have gotten together to create the Select Oklahoma organization, and they had their annual conference. And of course, uh, workforce and aviation aerospace were two topics front of mind. And then last but not least, we have the FAA Blue Side Up Conference, August 30th to the 31st. Uh, this was a, a, a reinvigoration of a past conference that they had back in the early and mid-2000s. Um, blue Side Up, obviously for your, you aviators, you know what Blue Side Up means. Um, but Blue Side Up was an opportunity for the state and the FAA to have some candid, open, honest dialogue with each other. Uh, at the end of the day, we wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't have airports in the room, we didn't have consultants in the room, we could just talk one-on-one, -on -one, state and FAA, on some of the challenges that we experienced with implementing infrastructure programs uh, in our region. So it was a great opportunity to have that, and I look forward to hosting Not That Rob Lowe again um, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the conference uh, in future years to continue those conversations. You'd be proud. I, uh, I, I hit on the FAA pretty hard, about as hard as I felt like I could do without you know, making any enemies uh, on things from reimbursable agreements to federal bureaucracy uh, to some of the uh, crazy requirements that they put on for our grants, some of the, the pre precondition requirements. So I was, I was uh, looked at as, as a force, and it was me, it was kind of me and the Texas guy across the table from each other, and it was kind of tag team, like, okay, you're it, you talk about this, now I'm it, I'm gonna talk about that. So it was a, it's a good opportunity to talk to our FAA friends and have some honest dialogue. But I'll, I'll save, the, uh, save the rest of the director's report for our December meeting, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, if, if you'd be uh, so inclined to let me do so. Sure. Any concluding <clears throat> remarks? If not, our next meeting will be December the 13th, 2023, 10 o'clock. Any new business? Hearing none. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I shall move. Go ahead. We are adjourned.